in pit lane is proudly brought to you by the Australian Sports Sedan Association of Victoria. Round five of the Grunt Performance Victorian Sports Sedan Championship. And with thanks to Slipstream Race Graphics. Everybody. Welcome to another edition of In Pit Lane, a very busy program tonight. Joining us a little bit later on in the program, this weekend down at Phillip Island, we've got Supercart action and young Supercart racer Nick Shembury will be joining us a little bit later on in the program. Also, we've got some real cool music tonight. We've got some jazz from Pete Mitchell and Brian Carahassan duo. They're going to get together a little bit later on in the program. But as I said, a packed program. I've got no time to talk, not time to say anything other than this is the In Pit Lane Motorsport News. Fine weather and a great turnout of classic cars brought a big crowd to Sandown last weekend for the annual historic meeting. The problem of course is it's not just on track where the great looking cars are. You can spend all day just roaming around the car parks and off track displays to enjoy some wonderful automotive engineering. On track, it was a weekend of high attrition for the Formula 5000 Brigade, and with Andrew Robson's Lola out of contention after a crash in race two, it was Brian Sala in the Maddich that led all the way for the victory. Bill Hemming made a great start in his Elfin MR8 to take an early second place, but Dean Cam in the Chevron B24 caught and passed the Elfin on lap four to take the place. Adrian Ackhurst drove his Lola T332 to fifth place, with David Crabtree in the march finding his way around Rod Carroll's Lola T140 in the battle for last past the post after Jeff Monday retired the Elfin MR5B on lap five. More Chev power at the head of the field in the Group N Division 1 race. Aldo Di Paoli's thundering Chevrolet Camaro led all the way to beat home the Aussie six-cylinder brigade, led by the XU1 Tirana of Craig Allen and the charger of Les Walmsley. David Hardman in the Hardman JH1, built by his father Jim back in the day, won the PQ1R racing feature over the Rolt RT4 of Sean Whelan. Perry Sparides in the big Lola T70 had his hands full with the Hocking 901 Formula Holden of Rowan Carrig with the big banger sports car eventually taking third place. In the Q racing class, it was a win to Hugh Gartley, who has as much history with his car as the car itself. I uh, bought it when it was four months old. It was, uh, it was built in 73. I bought it in 1974 and ran it for quite a few years in Formula 3. Then I retired it and uh, hung it up on the rafters for a few years and eventually I thought, well, it's time I got it out and ran a story because I ran Formula 2 and other cars in other categories. So, yeah, it's been a beautiful little car. It was built by uh, Brian Sheed in a little factory down in Morty Alec. Uh, he built several cars and a lot of cars are here today too. Uh, so they've got a long history of, uh, of uh, racing cars and a few clubbins and Formula Holdens as well. Yeah. Uh, well, Formula 3 was mostly we ran Corolla engines, Toyota 3, 3K Corolla engines, 1298cc. Uh, it was free what you could do to the engine as far as uh, making it go better, which uh, we all did make them go better. The historic Formula Ford class continues to grow with some of the biggest fields for the weekend. Jonathan Myers led all the way, holding off Richard Davison and Andrew McInnes in a Van Diemen 123. The classic Group C and A touring cars are always a popular class, and it was the Group A ex Tony Longhurst Sierra of James Vernon who came out on top. Milton Seferis in his ex Peter Jansen Commodore won the Group C fight as Ed Singleton ended his race in the STP Commodore with a trip into the wall over the top of the rise. If it was variety you were after, then you'd be hard pressed to go past the Group N Division 2 race. Old Holdens of all kinds, Fords, large and small, Volvos, yes, Volvos. 
triumphs and a bunch of screaming minis all taking on the Jaguars led by Brock Green's immaculate example that led all the way for the win. Stephen Jeffs Holden EH kept the Jaguar in sight but he had a lonely old race in second place. The closest battle was between the minis of Henry Draper and James Holloway with the veteran Draper coming out on top to take the final podium step. A huge turnout last Friday as Off Street Drag Racing returned to Melbourne's Calder Park. The long queues for scrutineering showed just how much pent up demand there's been for a return to the strip in Melbourne. In the old days, the fields were pretty much restricted to the old Ford versus Holden stroke Chevy battle, with the occasional Valiant thrown in for a bit of variety. My, how things have changed, with Volkswagens, Audis, BMWs, Mercedes and other such exotica reflecting the huge changes to the local performance car scene. As tradition dictates at Calder Park, the moment the first cars fired up in anger, the rain came down, delaying procedures and frustrating all and sundry. The good news is the weather cleared up and once the track had dried, it was on with the action. In the USA, the NHRA drag racing season wrapped up crowning new champions. In top fuel, Steve Torrance made NHRA history by sweeping all six playoff races during the drag racing countdown to the championship after defeating Tony Schumacher in the final round. JR Todd clinched his first ever funny car championship when he defeated two-time event champion Tommy Johnson Jr. in the final. Matt Smith won his third Pro Stock Motorcycle Championship at the final round. He powered his elite motorsports EBR to a national speed record pass of over 201.22 miles per hour to defeat defending world champion Eddie Crowick. And Tanner Gray won in Pro Stock to defeat Drew Skillman to wrap up the title for 2018. It was the first time in NHRA history that all of the event winners were also crowned the world champions in their respective categories. Jensen Button is the 2018 Super GT Champion. A third place finish for Button and co-driver Naoki Yamamoto was enough for them to seal the title in the final round at Twin Ring Motegi. The 2009 World Formula One Champion only had to finish ahead of New Zealand driver Nick Cassidy and Ryo Hirakawa to take the title. They finished fourth. The race was won by the Arta NSX of Tomoki Nojiri and Takura Izawa. Kyle Busch held off the challenge from Brad Keselowski to win Sunday's penultimate round of the NASCAR season at Phoenix Raceway. Kyle Larson ended up third, Eric Almirola in fourth and Kevin Harvick completed the top five. With the victory, Busch has now locked himself into the final championship four next weekend at Homestead where he'll join Joey Logano, reigning series champion Martin Truex Jr and Kevin Harvick to finally end the most convoluted and ridiculous championship format in all of motorsport. And somebody called Lewis Hamilton has won another race to give Mercedes the World Formula One Constructors Championship. Hamilton won the Brazilian Grand Prix after Red Bull's Max Verstappen collided with the lap car of Esteban Ocon, dropping the Dutchman back to second place. After the race, Verstappen took his frustrations out on Ocon in a pretty tame game of push and shove that earned him two days of public service at the direction of the FIA. Which will probably be to give John Tony's sponge bar. Hamilton's teammate Valtteri Bottas was third, just ahead of a hard-charging Dan Ricciardo, who recovered after being forced to take a grid penalty for changing a turbocharger. You're watching In Pit Lane. We'll be back in just a moment with our special guest, supercar racer Nick Shembury. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Okay, for all of you watching live on YouTube, thank you for watching. Also on Facebook Live. If you're watching us on Facebook Live, remember that if you uh, want to see a, a, a higher quality stream, that you can go to the Input Lane YouTube channel. We've got live chat there as well. And of course, we archive all the programs up there as well. But if we can get uh, Nick to uh, come on in and join us here at the, uh, at the set. So Nick, if you'll just wander in and he will get himself into position. We've also, you might have noticed at the opening, we have, um, not, not only do we have Nick in the, in the studio, but we've got Nick's cart as well. So this is a new... Uh, yes, yeah, so this is our new um, Anderson 125 gearbox cart 
uh, with a DEA engine. Okay, well, we'll, um, we'll find out more about that when we come back on, on 31, but this is a brand new cart, and we've, uh, it was quite a struggle getting it into the but It's here, and it looks really damn good. Now, we will just say, over the weekend, but to lots of people, thank you, everybody, who came up to us at, uh, at Sandown and also out at Calder to say how much they've been enjoying the program. Somebody said to me at Calder on Friday night about, you know, like, why do you keep going on about sponsorship? I mean, no one gets paid or anything like that. I'll let you know that over the weekend, we managed to spend, you know, up to this point in time for this program, we spent about five or six hundred dollars. Um, so, you know, even though nobody gets paid, it does cost money to actually produce this program, believe it or not. And for that reason, we are just so grateful to our sponsors. And our sponsors, of course, are the Australian Sports Sedan Association of Victoria. And just a reminder that at the end of this month, Phillip Island will play host to Australia's biggest single sports sedan event, the Phillip Island 50k Plate. Now, this year's event will also double as the final round of the Grunt Performance Victorian Sports Sedan Championships and uh, also the Australian Sports Sedan title as well. Victorian driver Steve Tomassi and his V8 Chev powered Calibra currently leads the championship and with both Thomas Randall and Tony Ricciardello both not competing at Phillip Island, he's red-hot favourite to take his first national title. But he's not going to have that all to himself. He'll have challenges from the Trans Am cars, the Mustang of Philip Crompton, Dean Cam's Corvette, We'll also have the Audi uh, of uh, uh, Kerry Bailey will be there in John Goulet's Audi, as well as top sports stand competitors from Victoria, such as Shane Woodman in his Chev-powered BMW and Michael Robertson in the big Monaro. Now, they'll face up to the challenge of local stars Rick Newman in his Falcon, Chaz Talbot in his Camaro, and, of course, the local Rotary Brigade, led by Bruce Henley and Graham Gilliland. And we'll be giving you a full preview of the uh, event next week when Michael Robertson, who'll be our guest on next week's In Pit Lane to preview the big event. So look, keep the calendar free for the big weekend, November the 24th to the 25th, and experience Island Magic at its very best. It is, as we say every year, it is one of the great fun weekends of motorsport. And if you're one of these people who just goes to the occasional car race, just goes to the Grand Prix or the Sandown 500 or something, and you think you've seen motorsport, no, go to Island Magic, then you'll see motorsport. And of course, In Pit Lane and all of us at RMI TV Student Television would just like to say thank you to the Australian Sports Dan Association of Victoria for their generous ongoing support of In Pit Lane, because without them, we ain't on the air. Speaking of on the air, we're going to come back on the air with Channel 31 in a moment, and we'll introduce them to our guest, Nick Shembry. So, if uh, we're ready in the control room, uh, Richard, we count us down. Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Well, super carts are something that, you know, if you've never seen them before, they are one of the most remarkable sights going around a track like Phillip Island. I mean, we, many years ago, we covered the super kart racing quite regularly out there, and we, um, we timed them at one stage, and pretty much between the entry into the old Honda corner and going out onto the, the exit of Siberia, they were far and away the fastest things running out there, and that includes things like Formula Holdens, Formula 3s, and those sorts of things. They are just insane vehicles going around that track. Somebody who's going to be racing there this weekend down at, uh, at Phillip Island is our guest tonight. He's going to be racing in the 125 uh, gearbox category. He is Nick Shembry. Nick, welcome to In Pit Lane. Thank you. Now, this is, uh, it's, the cart's sort of sitting there behind us at the moment, looking very schmick and new. It's, it's fairly new, isn't it? Tell us, tell us about the cart, where yeah. it came from and how long you've had it. So this cart here is a brand new Anderson 125 gearbox cart, which uh, we got from England in the past couple months. Uh, our aim is to race it, of course, next year, um, getting a few races in at the end of this year, testing in preparation for next year. So what have you been racing so far? Uh, this year I raced a uh, 125 non-gearbox, which is a Rotax engine. Um, prior to that, I also raced Formula Ford and, of course, Sprint Karts. Going from the uh, non-gearbox to the gearbox, I mean, what sort, of, uh, what sort of difference are you noticing? And, I mean, how much faster are the gearbox karts from what you've been racing? Uh, so, uh, the gearbox karts are quite a bit quicker. So the non-gearbox is around 25 horsepower. Uh, this one here is a DEA engine six-speed gearbox, so it's about 50 horsepower. Um, the lap times around Phillip Island are around 10 seconds quicker. Um, 
and it's got a top speed of around 180 kilometres an hour. There. So what sort of speed, when you're going through sort of, you know, like Dewan Corner, you get to the end of that uh, long main straight at Phillip Island, you hit the fastest, one of the fastest corners in Australia. The Formula 3 cars, I know, were going through flat. Um, are you going through flat as well? Yeah, so we're going through flat out there. The cars stick down pretty well. We do turn one at Phillip Island, yeah, at around 180 kilometres an hour. And of course, you know, with the, the bigger carts, you know, things like the, the 250 Internationals and the 250 Nationals, they're actually faster around Phillip Island than the MotoGP yeah. bikes, aren't the, they? Yeah, the lap record in um, 125, uh, 250 International is, yeah, quite a bit quicker than uh, the MotoGP as well. Which is incredible when you think about it. I mean, for a start, they're running with a smaller engine, but I suppose with the aerodynamics and all that. The aerodynamics is, is interesting. And if we have a look at the cart, we can see, I mean, so some of the... Um, some of the, the 250 carts, of course, have the big wings and all the rest on the back. You don't have quite that, but you do have a lot of aero on the on this cart. If we could see out the back, we can't quite get around there, but there is the, um, there's a diffuser on the back of it. How much do you notice the aero, and how different has that been from your, from your gearbox cart? Yeah, compared to the non-gearbox cart, the aero does uh, allow it to stick to the track a lot better. Um, there are corners where, you, at the start, you kind of got to learn to trust the cart too because it's got a lot more grip than you'd expect as well. The thing about them is, I suppose, you know, because they're so light and the centre of gravity is so low, that when they do go, even though they go quickly, they don't tend to go too long. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where they spin in their own and they tend to stop, which is a, a good thing. They're not, what I'm trying to say is they're not as dangerous as people might think. No, no, they're not very dangerous, obviously, because they are so low and wide, they do seem to stay flat. Um, and obviously, because they're so low, they do seem to if you do have an accident, stay flat and slow down pretty quickly as well. Obviously with the front brakes and rear brakes, they do stop pretty quickly. And that's one thing, you've got brakes on all four, four wheels on this or yeah. have you got three brakes on uh, this? Three, so you've got one three. on each front wheel and one on one the rear, rear axle, axle. Yeah. yeah. So what are your, uh, your plans for, for next year? Are you going to follow the Australian Championship, are you? Yeah, so this year I won the Australian Championship uh, in the non-gearbox cart. So our aim next year, obviously, is to win it in the gearbox cart. Um, and this weekend, uh, 17th and 18th of November at Phillip Island, we're racing both classes for the Victorian state title. And now that's interesting coming up this weekend because it is a Phillip Island uh, sprint meet as well, so you'll, you'll get plenty of variety yeah. down there. Now, I think it's one of those things that, you know, like technically there's not supposed to be any spectators or anything, but I think if you, if you sort of go and you just sort of, you know, like be very nice to the people at the gate, they might just let you in. Just tell them that in pit lane sent you in. Yeah, you'll be right. Um, but uh, now I don't know whether it's still happening. I don't know if you've heard, but also Matthew Radicic was supposedly going to be running a, an Indy car. Down yeah. there on the weekend. I'm Have you heard sure. anything more about that? That's I'm pretty sure quiet. that's still happening. Yeah. Um, I heard that he's going to go down there and try and break the lap record. The lap record. Yeah. Yes, well, hopefully we'll be able to get an opportunity to go down and, and see that because that, for, for no other reason, you know, just to see a, you know, a full-on, and it's a fairly modern Indy car, it's not sort of an old historic thing. Um, that would be sort of very interesting. What are your long-term plans? Oh, long-term? I'm not quite sure yet, but obviously I want to look at Winning the championship. Say for me one. So just, just you know, give us. We need a headline for tomorrow. Say, I'm going to take Daniel Ricciardo's place. Uh, I don't know about Formula One, but definitely V8 supercars would be pretty cool. Or Formula One, something quick. Yeah, that's always depresses me. Like years ago, when we had kids on your age, they always come. Everyone used to say, oh, oh, I want to be in Formula One. I want to be in Formula One. And now they're going to say, oh, V8 supercars. The good news is, by the time you're ready to be running V8 supercars, there probably won't be any V8 yeah. supercars. <laughs> There will, but there will be things like GT. Now, do you have a look at things like that? Things like we saw Super GT yeah. from Japan before. We've got the Asian Le Mans series. LMP3 is coming into Australia. Are you looking at all of those things? A little bit. Obviously, so many series going around now. There's so so much variety of what you can race. And we always want more. Motorsport, Just we just can't yeah. have enough, can we? I had a go, I'm having a go this year um, in the Hyundai XL Cairo Enduro Cup. So we, uh, me and my teammate, Brad James... Um, actually came seventh in the first round at Phillip Island, and we got the second round coming up uh, in the start of December at Winton, which is the second round of that. So that's pretty cool. Everybody's sort of getting into the, so many people getting into the Hyundai's yeah. at the moment, especially young guys. We've, we've had a, f a few people, Michael Clemente came in a couple of weeks ago. So many of you. Um, we might uh, get onto that a little bit later. We'll come back, uh, we're going to take a break now, but uh, we'll find out a bit more about your Excel and other adventures a little bit later on in the program. But uh, for the moment, Nick, stay there with us because um, now, now 
When we come back, do you like jazz? I do. Just, you've come to the right place, my friend. Yes, you, you've come to the right place too. This is In Pit Lane on Melbourne's Channel 31. We're going to take a break. When we come back, more with Nick Shembury. And we've got some jazz with our special guests, Pete Mitchell and Brian Karahassan. They're going to be take, playing us out a little bit later on in the program. But you're watching In Pit Lane. We'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so for all of you watching at home, we'll um, we'll get Peter and um, and Brian in if we if we could, and get them set up, and they're going to play us uh, they're going to play us a, a bonus track for our viewers watching at home on uh, on YouTube and also on Facebook Live. Now remember, if you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe. It's not just something we say. I mean, if you know anything about the whole you know YouTube algorithm thing, um, it's very very important that you like subscribe. And also, you know, click the notification, the little bell icon, so that every time we do something new, when we upload new programs, we can, we can you'll find out about it. And also, um, it just keeps us in in the forefront of everything that's happening with um, everything that's happening on on the uh, YouTube front. Now, um, Peter, if you guys want to, yeah, jump up, and um, we'll. we'll Get your, uh, we'll get your first song. We'll let you get into position and uh, let Bill get some light on the subject. And we'll, um, and we'll kick off. Um, we'll give you all the details of where Pete and Brian are, uh, are playing around Melbourne a little bit later on. And also uh, and any other details and where you can uh, you know, contact them and uh, check out their music. Because I think you're probably going to want to find out more about them after you hear them tonight. But as I said, as an exclusive for In Pit Lane YouTube and Facebook viewers, this is Pete Mitchell and the Brian Karen Hassan duo and Porterhouse.
Pete Mitchell and Brian Kara Hassan. They'll be, they'll be playing us out a little bit later on in the program. We'll tell you about where you can see them live and also where to catch up on Facebook and all of the usual social media channels. Thanks, guys. That was, that was just, dare I say it, fucking awesome. <laughs> that was great stuff. Now, that'll, that, that'll lose us our monetization on YouTube. We're absolutely screwed now. And I've got minus in me. We've just lost it. But it's jazz. It makes you do that sort of thing. It just fries your mind, man. Now, coming up, uh, as we said, this weekend is uh, Supercarts down at Phillip Island. We're going to talk to, uh, to Nick Shembury about that in a moment when we're joined by our friends back on Channel 31. If you could... Uh, Richard, if you could wander over and give us a uh, give us the countdown, that would be uh, that would be wonderful. Richard is now going to do Pete, our regular floor manager, is not here tonight, so he's, he's the, this is the voice of Richard. Welcome back to In Pit Lane. We're here with Nick Shembury and joining us a little bit later on to take us out of the program will be the Pete Mitchell and Brian Karahassan duo. But right now, Nick, let's talk about this cart that's sitting right next to us. Um, an Anderson chassis, that's a, one of the sort of the premier sort of chassis in, this is like the, the Mercedes of uh, supercars, isn't it? Yeah, so they're quite successful overseas. Uh, it's one of the first ones in Australia. Um, they've won a fair few European um, and British championships um, in the past. It's a British built chassis. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's actually the first 125 gearbox to be in Australia. So who will you be competing if, if this is the sort of the first, the first one, what sort of fields will you be running against? And are you, do you have your own uh, race or are you mixed in with mostly with the 250 nationals and, in, and internationals? Yeah, so the two, all the gearbox carts, um, the 250 national, international and 125 gearbox all go on the track at the same time, obviously racing in their respective groups. Um, the 125 gearbox is probably the biggest field at the moment. Um, this weekend there'll probably be around 15 to 20 of them. Um, and they're all fairly close as well. Um, obviously we're hoping to have that bit of edge, but they are all quite close to each other, which is now we can see if we have a look at the car, we can we can see on the, that you've got some uh, you've got some support there from all Penride, a local company, which is is very good. How important is sponsorship, and how hard is it to get for something like supercars, which doesn't have the high profile of a supercars or any of the the mainstream circuit racing categories? Yeah, well, of course, sponsorship is always helpful because um, motorsports not the cheapest sport, um, but so also noticed. also having the sponsorship does help with. Um, kind of getting your name out there as well and finding new opportunities too. Penrite have helped us a lot since I was in sprint carts, since I was around 10 years old. Um, so they've kind of been with us all the way and obviously helped us, taken us to events, which has been really cool. Um, and yeah, their support has been obviously super helpful. So have us. you met David Reynolds? Yes. More particularly, have you met his girlfriend? No. Oh, well, never mind. You have, you, you, you've got to meet his girlfriend. I mean, I think David would even say that. If, if, if you've got a choice... You'd want, to, you'd want to meet his girlfriend. Now, uh, okay, this weekend you've got, uh, you mentioned the Hyundai Excels. Is that something you want to move into more next year? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know if I want to race it. Um, it is quite an enjoyable class to run. Obviously, so many cars um, racing on all at once. Um, the endurance races are probably the most fun races. Uh, the first round at Phillip Island, there was 52 cars on the track at, the, at once, which was amazing racing all super close as well, which was really fun, and I'm sure that the next round at Winton is going to be exactly the same. Well, we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye out for you, both with the supercars this weekend and also with uh, behind the wheel of the Hyundai XLs, but uh, thanks for coming in, and Nick Henry, thanks for joining us thank in Pit you. Lane. And thank you for you uh, joining us at home. Now, to play us out tonight, the Pete Mitchell and Brian Karahassan duo. And they'll be playing on Wednesday, the 5th of December, from 6 till 9 at the Perry Como Cafe Wine Bar. And that's at 196 Como Parade, West Parkdale. They can also be found on Facebook, Pete Mitchell Sachs, or you can email him at petelejazzer at yahoo.com if you want to book them for any, uh, any gigs coming up. And I think that if you've heard that, you'd probably want to do that. Tonight, they're going to play us out with their song Flip Dip. So until we see you next week with our special guest Michael Robinson from all of us here at In Pit Lane, it's good night. And here's Pete Mitchell and Brian, Brian Kara Hassan, Hassan and Flip Dip. <laughs>
Thank you. 